Well, how I came to be here, really, how I started. <clears throat> I was born in England and I came to Canada and uh, lived in Montreal for several years. I was always an artist. Uh, I've been an artist since the age of three and uh, since I could draw. In fact, my mother said I was a horrible child until I could draw. So <laughs> that was kind of uh, a good start to my life. And uh, I went to art college. I left school when I was 16. I, left, I went to art college. Uh, and then I came, as soon as I graduated, I came over, well, I taught for a couple of years in England, and then I came over to Canada. I tried to get a teaching job, but I needed Quebec uh, certification. So I thought, well, I'm not going to go back to school. I'm going to see if I can do my art. I think to be an artist in Quebec, at the time when I came back, there was less competition. In England, I was living in London. There's a lot of artists in London, although I had a great experience. I, jo I joined a group of women artists called Five Women Artists Plus. And they were formed as a group by two women who had a hell of a time trying to exhibit in art galleries because the primary focus for art galleries was male artists at the time. This was back in the early 80s. So they formed a group of artists. There were five of them at the time, but we grew to 25 in the end and we used to uh, put on exhibitions. We actually got an art gallery to support us as well. Um, and that was great, that was a wonderful experience. I'm a painter and I do mixed media, uh, mostly in acrylic, but I use different objects sometimes in the paint. I've got washers and all kinds of things you use for tiling and uh, bits of string and uh, sand and all kinds of stuff which I pick up at the hardware store. Uh, so yeah, I, I, it's mostly mixed media. I started working for graphic design companies, uh, advertising agencies, so I had to do drawing, a lot of drawing. Uh, then painting came later on. I started painting uh, probably uh, about 10 years before I came here full time. Uh, well, before that, even then, I, I did quite a bit. But as a job, uh, I was doing it full time for a, quite a number of years, just until I was able to make a living out of it. I worked for various different companies, uh, doing artwork for them. So it was very creative. Uh, it's been a great experience. Today, my art is concerned mostly with nature and women. <laughs> There's two themes. So if you look around my studio, you'll see uh, these two themes. I'm very much into preservation of wildlife. Uh, I'm also interested in the female form as well. So I try to do both. And I love color. As you see in my work, I absolutely adore color. So that's what it's about. It's uh, primarily color, shape, semi-abstract. Um, that's how I've developed it over the years. I like the feel of paint. I love to feel the texture of paint against a surface, primarily canvas because canvas has a little bit of a give. Uh, so I think it's what it is. It's the actual tactile experience that I really like. It's very hard to choose which is my favorite because they change over the years. Sometimes I'll look at something and really love it and two years later I'll absolutely hate it. But at right now my favorite is a work of art I have on the wall here which depicts a woman reclining. She's on a sofa, she's holding a guitar. And I'm not quite sure what she's thinking, but I think she's thinking, yeah, what am I gonna play next? The first artist who really inspired me was Paul Klee. He was a Swiss artist, but he lived in Germany most of his life. He was around the, in the 1920s, 1930s, and he actually um, started me off on the square idea because that's what he did. 
well, some of his work. It was very playful work, but he did also a lot of squares and a lot of colour. He, he taught at the Bauhaus in, uh, in Weimar, Germany. I paint every day as much as I can. If it's only for one hour or if it's for eight hours, I do some every day. Yeah, it's my life. Follow your dream, I always say to people who want an art career. Don't let anybody stop you and say, you can't make a living out of art, forget it. Uh, my mother always told me, well, you know, you can always teach. Uh, in fact, I do have a, a teaching uh, a degree and I was able to teach, uh, not in Canada, but I did teach in England for a couple of years and um, because the qualifications didn't count here in Quebec, so I went into practicing art. But uh, anyway, yeah, I wouldn't put anybody off. Always do follow your dream. You can always find a way, always. I have a failure, um, probably one among many, but one that really sticks out in my mind is I was working for a company that made functional art and I was asked to do some paintings on some chairs and there was a woman who had commissioned a chair and she wanted a portrait of her husband painted on this chair. It was supposed to be a surprise birthday present. So she sent a photo of, the, of the, her husband and so she wanted the body and the head to be the back of the chair, the, his arms to be the arms on the chair, and his legs as the legs, etc., etc. So she sent this photo, and rather unfortunately or bizarrely, he had a very big gap between his two front teeth. So I had a bit of a <laughs> problem. It was a big quandary. Do I? do him exactly as he is, or because it's supposed to be a present from his wife, I should make it a little bit more flattering. So I closed up the gap a bit, but just to show he did have a little bit of a gap between his teeth, so it would look like him. So I did this, this painting on the chair, it worked out really well. Everybody said, oh yeah, it looks like him, it's really good, and we sent the chair off. Anyway, a couple of days later, we had this phone call. I hate the chair, I'm sending it back. So she, so we said, well, why? And she said, he's got a gap between his teeth. I hate it. So she sent the, the chair back and we had to fill in the gap between his teeth. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, she liked it after that. After that she yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was okay then. I want to give people some joy. I want to put a smile on people's faces. There's so much bad that's going on in the world, but there's also good too, and I want to emphasize the good in this world. I want to emphasize that, hey, yeah, you know, there's beautiful animals, there's people, there's color, uh, there's a vibrancy to life, and this is what I try to depict in my art. So if somebody can get some joy out of my art, that's great. I have a website where people can contact me. My website is very simple. It's sarahporterart.ca and they'll find all my details on the website. Anybody who wants to follow an art career can. It needs perseverance. Don't give up. Just work on it. In fact, I knew somebody who was a teacher. She was an art teacher and she told me she had a student who wasn't very good at art, but because she practiced and she worked and she worked and she worked, she ended up, ended up having a huge retrospective at the Beaux-Arts in Montreal, so she made it. I would like to acknowledge the support of the Official Language Minority Community Media Consortium and the Government of Canada for the Community Media Strategic Support Plan.